In eight weeks, she saw an increase of a thousand percent of users on her website. She achieved 22% more than her original capacity goal in one location and 9% more than her original capacity goal in her other location. She achieved number one ranked Google listing status for free for both locations. She exceeded her profit margin goals and achieved a wait list of more than 10 ready to convert leads for her upcoming location launch. Entrepreneurs shouldn't be stuck. It's unnecessary, it's frustrating, and unfortunately, it's where most of us end up landing. Your business should serve you, your dreams, and the future you set out to create. So let's destroy the myth that you have to work 60, 80, or 120 hours a week in order to make your dreams a reality. I'm Jay. And I'm India. This is the Marketing Breakthrough Podcast. Let's Let's get get to it. it. We have to focus on the results. We have to focus on what we can achieve and obtain for clients as we're working with them because there's a fun dynamic. There's a piece of the equation that is is great. It's fun. Being able to dive into the creative, being able to work on those things is amazing and necessary uh, in order to create that authenticity for different brands. However, the results are what speak. So the results is really what we want to ultimately obtain. And we actually have our our course called results as a result of that, because uh, results is the focus. It's the, the primary objective of going through that course that we offer and helping our clients to get where they want to go. And results is going to be the ultimate definition of that. When we started, we definitely came from a perspective of wanting to help entrepreneurs create more freedom in their lives. We wanted them to have fun. We wanted them to be able to to get away, to find those experiences. But the the way that you get to that fun, the way that you find that that freedom and have those opportunities to find bits of joy in your day is by focusing first and doing the work, by obtaining those results. Coming from the background of a marketing agency, we ran that for a while and then realized that we were, one, losing passion for the deliverable side of the work and really being the the middleman, being able to uh, resource. We had, had a team that we were working with to create these different projects and create these deliverables, but we weren't as passionate about it um, because it wasn't as much fun. We were going in, we were, we were working with clients, which was great, and we really loved that part. But then going into and doing the deep dive of the actual work was less exciting. And it was just because you weren't really able to see immediate results. And then we were handing these things over and it, as a website being a great example of that. You hand a website over to somebody and then it's really up to them to do something with it. Our our company was responsible for the creation, the building, the development of this website. And we would have other projects like social media management. We would have other projects that we would do and we would dive into and we would hand these over. And then there was another piece of it that was almost always missing. And I say almost always because it wasn't a consistent thing. It wasn't a constant. It's not a for sure that they won't know how to utilize it. But the responsibility fell on them to figure out how to utilize this resource that they have just spent resources on, whether that being time or money, and they've created this. And so we realized that a pivot was a new direction was in store for our business. We wanted to be able to serve entrepreneurs, wanted to be able to serve these business owners on a different level. Mm -hmm. We wanted to be able to come alongside of them and help them get exactly where they wanted to go, which is why we created the Breakthrough Blueprint. And then we created the Breakthrough Community on the coaching side. What makes both of those offers so fantastic is the fact that they incorporate our zone of genius. They incorporate all of Jay's amazing skills and knowledge, all of your knowledge, Jay, and all of mine. And it it really was this effort that we put into. It was months and months that we created. No, sorry. Hang on, I'll fix that. It was months and months that we took to really create and formulate this plan, this roadmap, if you will, 
of how are we going to help customers? How are we going to help our clients get to that next level? And if we can hand off our skills and knowledge, our zone of genius to them in this packaged product, this finished thing and hand it off to them, how are they going to then succeed with that for a whole year? One of the other factors that plays into the equation of long-term overall results is that of shifting and changing algorithms. So we're all familiar with this to some extent because of social media. Even if you look at blog posts of different recipes, you see that there are an increasing number of ads, and that's because algorithms are shifting. They're allowing more ads in, but those, those algorithms are popping up ads that are relevant to each of us. And when you look at that from a critical perspective, it is it can be it can be kind of annoying in in some <laughs> ways, but then from the marketing perspective, it's always changing. So there's always a need for either more content, there's always a need for more ads, there's always a need for different strategy, there's always a different approach. Let's talk about uh, Instagram, Facebook. The algorithms are always changing. When are your posts seen? At one point, it was it was based on time. It was based on if if I post at two o'clock and you pull up Instagram, your Instagram feed at two o one, there's a good chance that my post will be the first thing that you see. It has not been based on that for a really long time. Um, and then even more recently, we've shifted to videos and then reels and then going to where the platform isn't really even promoting photos, it's promoting reels, videos less and less. Reels are really, they want short form content because they're trying to compete with other markets, other platforms. It was the algorithm changing that was the most terrifying part of my job. It was actually something, I don't even know if I've told you this, Jay. It was something that would build up this anxiety in my stomach as I would drive into the office thinking about, oh my gosh, what if the algorithm changed? What are we going to do? How are we going to fix this? And it just, it was stressing me out so much because I felt like amidst everything that I was already doing, I was afraid that I was going to fail my clients by not being able to keep up all the time. Well, and it wasn't really anybody's fault. So we'll go into, you know, conversations where we're managing social media accounts for clients and all of a sudden there's a shift and then we have to go to, we would have to go to the client and this was probably my least favorite part and say, okay, your engagement has dropped. And the way to fix that is by going from, let's say, just use the the easy example of photo content to video content. So maybe mm-hmm. we were doing, you know, a few videos a month. Well, now we need more video content and we really need to start phasing out the photo content. Okay, well, that's great. However, that video content takes a lot more work to capture, create, to edit. And there's a lot more, usually a lot a lot deeper thought process that's going into that. So when you go back to the client and you say, hey, well, now in order to get you X results, we are going to need to spend X money. So we were getting X results. We're still going to get X results, but mm-hmm. it's going to cost you X too. Right. And so it 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 was it was a tough thing to do. And so moving all of that, that whole conversation into what we do now, and this is I mean, that's a, a very, very small tidbit around of the backstory. It's kind of like the cost of supplies, though, if you think about it. I mean, even with the the fluctuation of the economy and you think about having to, if you are like, let's say you were a contractor and you were like lumber became really expensive and then to, you're un- under contract with a client and you have to, you're building them a house and you have to go to them and say, oh, by the way, this is going to cost another 30 grand for the exact same thing that you initially wanted. That conversation sucks, but it, it felt does. like it kept happening. Absolutely. And yeah, and so it it's something that has to happen at, to some extent. But what we realized is that our skill was less and less of the implementation of these things and more in coaching people on how to do this for their own businesses. And so what we fell in love with was this whole idea that, okay, what we could do is we could teach entrepreneurs how to one, not have to write that check every month, not have to pay that bill every month so that they could do it themselves, but also teach them how to do it better. 
which is mm -hmm. where you get marketing breakthrough. It was less of wanting to focus on the deliverables and more focus on our skills to teach entrepreneurs how to bolster their skills, their businesses, their brands, and be able to create something that was far better than we could ever do. Part of that being that we were not on site. So if we were the, I, I was the photographer for a while. As a commercial photographer, I would come in and, and shoot at these different locations. And whether that was every two months, every three months, every four months, whatever the case may be, I'm coming in and I'm taking photos, but I'm not on site. I was working with bike companies and we would have posts scheduled out because we want to be prepared. We want to have forethought. We want to be, be ready for what's coming and we don't want to be scrambling the moment of. Well, then I would get... I would get something that would go live that day. And then I would get a phone call from somebody saying, hey, we're out of stock on that. I would work with different different retailers in, in those outdoor spaces. And it's like their busy season. So then they're saying, hey, that product's no longer available. That's not on our shelf. We can't actually get that anymore. But that's that's not on me. It was it wasn't on them either because they didn't know that that was scheduled. Maybe if they hadn't looked ahead at the schedule or whatever the case may be, it was nobody, really nobody's fault. But what my desire went to was what if I can teach them how to create better content, create more intentional marketing, mm -hmm. and they are there in person. You as the entrepreneur, if you're listening to this, you as the entrepreneur, you're there. Like your, your name is attached to it. You're a part of this. And you can be in there and say, hey, we just had a post go up. We are out of stock on this. We deleted the post, but we are out of stock. For those of you that saw it, I'm really sorry. But we have this option, this alternative for you. Whereas as, as the, the outside contractor, as the marketing agency, I would never know that. I think one of my favorite parts of what we offer now as we have transitioned into this and you know put together that zone of genius, like I had said, is the fact that we are now we're getting and we have an opportunity to use the skills that we gained in all those years working in the nonprofit space. Being able to train and teach people and lead people was always something that was honestly that we were good at. And, and not not from a conceited perspective, but just a point of confidence. Like I know we were really good at that. We are very good at that. And having a conversation, I think one of my favorite more more recent conversations with a client was just that initial meet and greet it was that opportunity where we were really just talking and figuring out what it is that they wanted and he kept saying i just want a roadmap i i need help to train my people i need i need help to show them what to do and to be able to come into that and say okay we can take your vision and your goals and your your hopes and your expectations all those things and we can build out this roadmap and then train through the coaching program, we can train your internal people to be able to do this on their own and fully succeed. Therefore, creating this amazing marketing machine that will operate and run pretty much on its own. And the goal of that being to bring more freedom to entrepreneurs. So mm -hmm. India referenced that earlier, but the goal of it being that we want to help entrepreneurs create more freedom. And so that usually comes down to team and and operations and the way that things are running and moving and and really in alignment and that strategy and the the implementation of things. And so to get into really practical what it is that we do because India mentioned the results at the very beginning of this episode and so you may be asking what in the world were those for? I don't understand. How did you do that? Um but to get into the really practical. So we offer we offer a breakthrough blueprint, which is a twelve month roadmap. And I want to I'm going to actually have India dive into this a little bit more because this is where she gets incredibly passionate, really excited, and it, uh, man, it is it is one of the most fun things that we do because it starts with a half day intensive with the entrepreneur, with uh, sometimes their their marketing lead, sometimes they bring in their their sales manager or this other key person that's vital to the organization, the brand. That half day intensive, I think I, I want to start with a point of levity here because it's it's probably the funniest thing that happens. And I apologize to our clients 
every single time. I tell them in advance and then it's proven true by the end of the meeting. It's it's four and a half hours long and they start, we, you know, you show up and you got your coffee and your snacks and you're excited. And you're like, hey, how's it going? And And you're talking about all these things and you're diving into their vision and their goals and all these dreams and all these bits and pieces and who they're who their ideal clients are and, and and whatnot. And it it starts so high energy, but then you fast forward four and a half hours later and they are like zombies every time by the end of it, they're like, Oh man. Okay guys, we'll we'll see you in two weeks. Bye. And then they click and they get off the call. And those of you that have been in that half day intensive, I get it. I love you. You're amazing. (laughs) This is what it is, but you know that we are putting in so many hours, four and a half hours of really intense work and conversation so that Jay and I can walk away and we can create something over the next two weeks. We can create this giant roadmap for you and hand it back and say, this is what we've got. And I think my favorite part of that entire process is watching them go from that really low energy to then the delivery meeting two weeks later and just watching their jaws drop. Like that's, that's my favorite moment of, wow, this is so much. How are we going to do this? Or there's always the classic, I don't think I can do all of that. And my response is always, it's okay. You don't have to do all of it. Heck, if you do 30% of it, you're doing 30% more than you're already doing right now. And it's going to help you achieve your goals because there's so much intentionality behind it. So going back though, is during that half day intensive, we really talk about that ideal client. We talk about your goals. We break down, okay, what is it that you have to do? Where do you want to be a year from this day? In one year, what has to happen? And then I say, okay, pulling in my practical skills, how am I going to help you figure this out? And so we backtrack. We backtrack all of these goals from 12, nine, six, and three months, and we make them happen. We say, okay, do this, this, and this, and that's how you're going to get there. And as we watch our clients implement this after the fact, as they implement this blueprint, we see them achieving those results in three months, in six months, or like I had said at the beginning of the episode, sometimes it's in eight weeks, which was incredible news. It was so cool. That that might not be the standard to go off of, but but it did happen. (laughs) She had to completely re-examine her goals. And I want to say it wasn't that her goals were too small because we actually talk about that during the meeting as well. We want to set those lofty, terrifying goals because we know that that's the only way that we're going to push ourselves in order to achieve them. Her goals were great. They were huge. But then they just really happened really quick. And it was amazing. But then it, it helped us realize like, wow, that investment that she made into pursuing that blueprint and implementing that blueprint. I mean, would you look back if you had spent a hundred dollars in order to achieve, you know, you, you spent a hundred dollars, you wanted to lose 50 pounds in the next three or, or in the next six months, but then you lost 50 pounds. Like let's ignore the health problems in this. <laughs> you <laughs> lost 50 pounds in two weeks. Would you say that that hundred dollars was wasted? No. Oh my gosh. You would be like, yeah, let's spend another. Now that again, to ignore all of that. That was a terrible analogy, <laughs> but-, but the blueprint itself is designed to help you gain, get to your goals, to achieve those goals with intentionality as quickly as possible. And all of it is by making sure that you're not wasting time doing something that you shouldn't be doing, that you're focusing your time and your energy on something that you know will work. So we call this a breakthrough blueprint, but to India's analogy, and I'm, I'm going to help put a bandaid on, on that and fix that a little <laughs> bit because we do refer to it as a roadmap because that's easy language that we understand. We want something laid out. We want it clear. We want it understood. Um, we want to be able to figure it out as we move forward. That being said, we refer to it as a roadmap. And the same is true with a roadmap to where in, in her case, as we as we created this breakthrough blueprint and we accomplished, I think it was 80, 85% of the goals in eight weeks plus two days mm-hmm. to be to be specific, plus two days is where we actually did the analytics for it. So just over eight weeks. And it wasn't that there was a frustration 
right? Because if you buy a roadmap and you're trying to, let's say one of the trips that we've been on that we absolutely love is Route 66. Mm -hmm. If you buy a roadmap with the stops along Route 66 and you're planning that this trip is going to take us three weeks and somehow you end up getting there in a week and a half from end to end or somehow you end up taking four months because you decided you wanted to stop and hang out you're not you're not frustrated with the map so so i i use both sides of the spectrum one being the we got to the destination quicker um or the the more enjoyable side would be, hey, we just decided that we're going to take four months to do this this Route sixty six trip, and in which case it wasn't it wasn't about the the speed so much, um, but it was the like the more enjoyable route, right? So it's not a matter of oh the roadmap didn't didn't do its job. The roadmap did exactly what it was for, and you know so you have the we figured out where we were going faster. And mm-hmm. then I, you know, I say that, you know, in, in the case of, of traveling and going and experiencing locations and things, it brings me more peace to be able to, you know, slow things down, to be able to calm things down. And I would say that that's the, the win. That's really the, the accelerated win of, man, we just got to experience more life on our trip. Right. Um, so ultimately it's the the roadmap is is this plan, this intentionality, this focus based on the ideal customer. And like India said, that that half day intensive we go through and the energy drops dramatically. That's one of my favorite words now. I created this word in the summer. Um, dramatically, <laughs> dramatically, and drastically. And I think they just fit together. Um, <laughs> so we're rolling with it. Um, but anyway, so the, so energy drops. And then we come into the implementation meeting and we have a conversation and it takes about an hour long and the energy drops in that room too, because you come in and you're really excited and and we go in and we start talking about these things and it's like, this is great. And there is so much information. There are so many ideas. There's so much detail to the ideal customer client profile that India will create that it can be overwhelming. Mm-hmm. but it is so helpful long-term. And and then that's why we created, this whole thing is exactly why cre- we created the Breakthrough Community because of the intentionality and the accountability side. Because then we walk away from that that implementation meeting, that implementation session where we're, we're going, oh man, how do we... How, how do we get there? The clients say, how do we achieve this? How do we implement this in the most effective way? And then immediately starting in our group coaching calls, we can dive into, let's start here. What's the, what's the primary thing? Our number one target, our biggest target for the year or our biggest target for Q2 or biggest, whatever it is, this is what we want to do. Where do you need help? How do we help you? And then from there, as we continue having conversations, or maybe you're asking, what does this look like? Because we do have the group coaching and there are a lot of different ideas around how coaching should be done. And some people want one-on-one, but the group coaching idea we have, we have focused on for, I would say two reasons specifically, there's two main focuses that I have for providing group coaching. One is that any time that I have been in group coaching, I believe that I have learned more from the questions that you ask than the questions that I ask. Mm-hmm. And not and not as I say, when I say I, I don't mean me as the coach for the community that we've created, but I mean that me as one of the participants, one of the coaches, is that, is that the word that we'd use? <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> one of the coaches. Um, I glean more from the other coaches asking questions and I become coached as a result of the coach answering those questions. And in many cases, people are asking questions that I don't know how to ask. Mm -hmm. We did a whole episode on this for clients. So, you know, for entrepreneurs, if you're a marketing lead, marketing manager um, for your client, or for 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 the brand 
we, we did a whole episode on this is answer the questions that they're not asking. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that your customers and your clients, they all have questions. They want to know what you do, what you provide. The majority of time, people don't know how to ask the question because they don't know what words to use. And um, it, I think one of the biggest examples that I go back to is that of that of insulation. And if an insulation contractor comes to your house and they say, hey, we need to redo your insulation, most of it's torn out or it's been eaten by rodents, it's been you know, gotten in by insects, we need to tear that out and we need to replace it with an R13. And we need to go up into your crawl space and we need to put in an R31, right? Do you know what that means? Or do you know, no. is it going to make you feel like it? an idiot because we don't want to, we don't want to feel dumb. Is it going to make you feel dumb having to say, I don't, I don't know what that means. And so instead of, and I've used this approach. So, and if you're an insulation contractor, I would encourage you to do this is, is you go in and you say, Hey, you need R13. And what that means is when you have, we, you have two by four walls and that's what we're going to need to focus on. Or if you go into, this is what we're going to need to do in the ceiling based on the stud height, based on the attic space. This is what we want to do for the most effective insulation at this point and explain it to them. And, and then you can even include, and you may already know this, you may already know what this is, but one thing that you can do is you can create some sort of a map, a diagram, something that clearly illustrates what it is that you're talking about. If you say R13 and R31, that is a very, I don't know, I want to say a simple example, but it's something that not a lot of people do. Group coaching is probably the only place that you, in life that you're encouraged to eavesdrop. Like listening in on other people's conversations, it's really important because that's where you're going to, like Jay had said, you're going to glean the most information. You're going to hear about things that you hadn't even considered that you need to be implementing, that you need to be doing, or random ideas will pop into your head about your approach. Even, I mean, even something as simple as a social media post idea, things will come up or someone will have an idea that will just spark ideas in your own brain. And you'll realize, oh my gosh, yes, I need that. Or how many times have you had an idea and collaboration, whether you realize that it was that or not, you said, hey, I want to do this. And somebody said, oh, but what if you add this and this? And you mm -hmm. go, oh, man, that makes way more sense. Absolutely. And so so there's the, the group coaching side where I believe that you can glean so much more um, from the, like India said, eavesdropping. You can <laughs> glean so much wisdom from the questions that you don't even ask. The other side of it is that you need community. Mm -hmm. You need people around you. I would be willing to bet that without an incredible amount of intentionality, you are not typically surrounded by entrepreneurs, by entrepreneurial people. Because I know for me, for India, we have to put ourselves strategically into those circles in order to be around entrepreneurs. And we have entrepreneurial friends and we have entrepreneurial um, acquaintances in our hometown. We know some people, but they're all it, busy. They're, they're all busy. working on their dreams. Yeah, they're busy. They are. Their businesses are are running. They're trying to manage that. Some of them have families. Some of them don't. But either way, everybody has the things that they're working on, the things that they're doing, and. Sometimes we just need a place where we can talk about business. We can talk about how much business is struggling, how much it, how hard it is to uh, maintain the growth that we're experiencing, or trying to figure out, like, hey, I, I, I'm kind of in over my head right now. Business took off. I don't really know what I'm doing. I need help. And someone's like, I had that exact same situation. I had the same business that you're in, and this is how I managed it. And you can build those relationships, those connections, those that that togetherness that we all need. We all deeply need community. And some of us are 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 really good about going out and just I'll say creating that community. Um, but for others, having a community where we can just join as an entrepreneur, where we can still be focused on our work, but build relationships and resources and connections outside of that is amazing. I was just a part of a female entrepreneurship group coaching call yesterday. And 
sitting in there and listening to the other ladies share, I mean, we came back to the age old conversation about how many people will tell you, you should get a real job and how defeating it is and, and how hard it is to, to feel understood, especially as a female entrepreneur and to, to, to have the confidence to step out in faith in yourself to really believe in what you're offering and and to keep going and to press on on the days that don't feel so great, don't feel like a success. And I think that applies to somebody who's running a business that's less than 100,000 a year to somebody who's running a multi-million dollar corporation. I mean, all of that, we all struggle. We are all humans and struggling with having confidence or having wisdom in certain areas, we're never going to know everything ever. And having a community of people around you that will encourage you and support you and honestly, just listen and understand, like just having somebody who gets it is just the most refreshing thing because explaining that specific situation to somebody who is not an entrepreneur is just a waste of time. It's really hard. It's true. Back to India's comment about why don't you just get a real job or you should just get a real job. And that is something, a question that is going to be asked by somebody who doesn't get you Mm -hmm. and is a question that is going to be when is going to be answered by you, but your answer probably will not satisfy the question asker. If that makes sense, like the person that's asking you that is just not going to get it. Mm -hmm. And you probably, if you are listening to this, I would be willing to bet that you have a belief and an understanding that your life is worth more and you have something greater to offer the world than just going to get a job. It's not to say that people who are asking that, because I, I want to point that out too. It's it's not that they're they're less than or that they're being mean. It it really comes from the fact that they don't it's it's ignorance. And it's not that they're not trying to understand, but until you're in that situation, you will never fully grasp the amount of risk, stress, anxiety, fear, all those things required. To be able to step out and say, I'm going to do this and this is how I'm going to feed my family. And these are the dreams that we're going to have. And I feel like I have to give this to the world. I have to create this or else I will, I might just hate myself for not even trying. And the other side of that is that there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a job. Yeah. But if you are an entrepreneurial minded person, that probably does not satisfy you. Mm -hmm. So really the focus here is that if you are being asked that question, your response is probably, yeah, I can go get a job, but that's just not fun for me. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. I want the challenge. I want the, uh, really where we like the struggle. We like the, the challenges, the ups and downs, the roller coaster, the different emotions, the different pieces of that puzzle that come into that. And so having a job in and of itself is incredible. We need people that have jobs. We need people that are solid and can back us up and can be there to keep us going and can help us manage different projects and different uh, aspects of the business. That is a critical component. But for you, it's probably not enough. And so that's where by creating a community of people we found that we could bring these these people together who are either the entrepreneur and they're looking for more or somebody who's the marketing lead who is just committed, determined, focused on creating something that is so much better for the business. They are sold out for their business. And and, and earlier to the, the comment that I made about <clears throat> having a job, if you're listening to this and you are the marketing lead, if you're that the head of the department, if you're the person that is getting things done, you are critical. Mm -hmm. When you are, when you are helping to market, you are helping to, you know, create this vision, this brand, this dream. um, And, and you're helping to change and serve the world through something that many people couldn't really do on their own. 
Um, and so at some point we all need support. I love coaching internal marketing people. It has been so much fun. Not to say that I don't love coaching entrepreneurs because I love it all. I, I really do. But there is something special that happens when I have the opportunity to step in and coach that internal marketing lead. Normally, when we're stepping in, there it just seems to be consistent. There is a high level of of stress and there tends to be a level of insecurity. Um, try, they're trying so hard to do their job well. They're trying so hard to catch the vision of the entrepreneurial CEO and wanting to make sure that they're just really driving this business to that next level that they so desperately want to. But they feel commonly like they don't have a lot of support. They don't, they don't necessarily feel like they're being believed in or, or they feel like they're failing a lot. And it's not to say, I'm not saying that they are. Uh, usually when we're, when we are talking with a client, it's, they're in that moment of desperation. They're like, I really need this. I need help. My team needs help. But we come in and we are this breath of fresh air. Our goal is to to support, not to tear someone down. It's We're not showing up to say, hey, this person is just terrible at their job. That's not it at all. I mean, if they're there, if they're that internal person, they're the perfect person. And so being able to support and equip them to be able to do their job better, to be able to find their own semblance of freedom. I love having those conversations where I can help them set up systems so that they can focus their attention less on those menial tasks and more on the fun side of their job, finding the joy in what it is that they do. And the thing that just brings them the, the most excitement, the thing that's energizing, the thing that is their zone of genius. You know, we we talk to people who are you know, in a marketing position. And I mean, to be honest, if I was in, if I, if I was in a marketing lead position and I had to, if part of my job was to look at analytics, it would destroy me. Um, it would crush me. <laughs> you would die. I would yeah. die. You would die. You would stare at the screen and do nothing. <laughs> I would do, I would freeze. Um, yeah. And I would, I would probably ultimately end up getting fired from that because that is not my my zone of genius. And so to be able to help somebody like me get out of that and say, hey, did you know that we can help you to set up uh, softwares that will do that? Can we, we can help you get analytics in a matter of moments. Plus, we can help you develop somebody on the team that is actually really skilled at reading analytics. So you don't even have to. Mm-hmm. What if you just bring them in for one hour a week and talk about analytics? And to be able to do that and to be able to build that team up is really um, is, is one of the things that we enjoy doing. So whether it's, you know, for the entrepreneur that doesn't like analytics or it's for the marketing lead that doesn't like those analytics to help you be able to find those solutions. So all in all, the two things that we focus on are Breakthrough Blueprint and the Breakthrough Community. Mm-hmm. We have this product that we deliver that is a one-year roadmap. And you can do it as quickly as you want to, or you can follow it for a year and it will help you. I can confidently say that it will help you get where you want to go. Mm-hmm. The other side is the community because you need people. If you're an mm-hmm. entrepreneur, you need people. Yeah. If you are a marketing lead, I'm going to be willing to argue that you need people too. Mm -hmm. because you may be surrounded by people in the business, but you may need to be surrounded by marketing minded people and Mm -hmm. people that are trying to figure out their marketing. We have those having someone that has your back is just so powerful. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And those two dynamics, those two major things that we offer, we believe brings into account our zone of genius, our ability to serve, our ability to help people create and our ability to help businesses grow. Mm -hmm. So if you are listening and you want to have a conversation, if you are curious about taking your business to the next level, trying to figure things out, um, if you're trying to figure out exactly where to go, if you're needing help with alignment, if you want to spend a little bit of time brainstorming briefly, follow the link that's in the description of this episode and book a discovery call. Discovery call will be 15 minutes. There's absolutely nothing to sell you in that call. But what we can do is we can talk about where you're at, where you're trying to go, what maybe some of those hurdles are that are standing in your way, some of those roadblocks. And then we can from there try to figure out what 
the next step looks like, what makes the most sense to move forward. It's 15 minutes. It's a phone call, not even a video call. So you don't have to be stressed out about, about being somewhere perfect, being, you know, being presentable. It doesn't matter. It's a uh, really low pressure. Ultimately, we want to be able to serve you. And that's a conversation where, you know, if we feel like we can, if I feel like I can serve you well, um, I'll tell you that. And if I don't feel like I can serve you well, then I'm going to try to connect you with somebody who can. Mm -hmm. And so that would be a very, very practical next step. Another next step that you could take right now is follow the link to our website, www.marketingbreakthrough.co, not .com, .co, marketingbreakthrough.co. And there is a pop-up that will come up in order for you to access and download the results marketing intensive, which is absolutely valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and so it has helped quite a few people be able to get their marketing. We were selling it for a while and we just realized that more people needed access to this. And so we wanted, we really wanted to just give it away. Feel free to reach out to us. If you have any questions, we would love to be a support system for you. We'd love to figure out how we can help you. And especially as we move into uh, the next phase of your business. Thanks for listening. Have an incredible day, and we will see you in the next episode. Marketing Breakthrough is a community of entrepreneurs with a vision of creating meaningful, sustainable businesses that allow freedom, fun, and adventure in their lives. Time is the only resource you can't get more of, so we believe in finding a way to achieve our entrepreneurial dreams with freedom in mind. We've designed this resource hub of tools, tricks, and techniques to grow your business and live the life that you set out to create.